Hi there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Practical Marketing Tips for Small Law Firms, where we interview industry experts about proven, used today attorney marketing strategies. In case we haven't yet met, I'm your host, Cara Pryor. I'm the president of James Publishing. I'm also the founder of our marketing amplifier system. And you know, it's true. I really spend most of my time strategizing with lawyers on how to improve their marketing results. And today we have a special guest with us. I'm excited to welcome attorney Kyle Newman. Thank you for having me, Kara. Yeah, yeah, I'm very thanks, excited Kyle. as well. Thanks. So Kyle is a third generation injury and med mal lawyer in New York City. He's fought tirelessly for the rights of seriously injured New Yorkers for more than 12 years. And with more than 100 jury trials under his belt, Kyle has a near perfect record and over $100 million in verdicts and settlements for his clients. He's a husband, he's a father, and he also happens to be super informative and entertaining on Instagram, where he has more than 19,000 loyal followers. I'm a big fan. We're super happy to have you here. Thanks. Welcome, Kyle. Thanks, Kara. Uh, I'm, I'm psyched. Uh, let, let's dive in. Dive awesome. right in. <laughs> let's do it. Like we always do, let's get to the meat. So today we're going to look under the hood a little bit, right? So we've been interviewing successful attorney marketers. Kyle's a great example of that. So Kyle, maybe we should begin with you telling us a little bit about how you got started in social media and maybe a bit about kind of the impact that it's had on your law practice. Uh, sure, Kara. Well, first up, thanks so much for having me. It's really an honor. Uh, you know, seeing some of the other people that you have on on this podcast, it's it's incredible. Um, I love what you guys do at James Publishing. We were talking before. I lo love the stuff that you guys have. Uh, we actually have some of the books that you guys have at the office. So uh, it's very cool to be here with you. Um, so really, um, being a trust. So just to take a step back. So my practice is when, when I first started out, uh, my dad was a solo practitioner. I work at James Newman PC in the Bronx in New York. Um, and when I started out, my dad was like, you're going to be our sole trial attorney right out the gate. Um, literally two weeks into practice, I was trying my first case. Uh, and I've been our sole senior trial attorney ever since for, it's going on 13 years now. Um, so, you know, for I'd say right until before the pandemic, maybe till the end of 2019, I was just a crazed trial attorney, nonstop, always in court, um, really honing my craft. And, you know, typically my my chip or, you know, my my thing has always been, I've always been the youngest guy and had some incredible ba battles in court. We're very fortunate. We have some great clients already. Um, and my dad's been doing this for going on 40 years. So we have an am amazing client base here in the Bronx. Um, so in 2019, uh, I had my busiest year ever. Uh, I tried to verdict, uh, I think it was close to 10 cases, which for years is, is a lot. Um, and a, um, about half of them were pretty complex medical malpractice cases, which is really my specialty. It's become that over the course of time. For what reason, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, at the end of, so in 2019, my wife out of the blue was diagnosed with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. So uh, it was, we had a two-year-old at the time. And on top of that, it was the craziest work year and probably my most successful work, were definitely my most successful um, at, up until that point. And uh, at the end of the year, I had my biggest trial of the year. It was over, over $6 million that we won. Uh, it went to, jur uh, the jury was deliberating. The case ended up settling for over 6 million bucks. But um, at that point, I kind it kind of hit me um, that I could really do this. That you know, I was you know to me you know pretty real deal. So um, you know, I had always been fascinated with teaching. I love doing CLEs and and really speaking about the practice of law, um, especially to younger attorneys who are really just starting out. Uh, and then I came across um, you know I think on Facebook maybe. And at this point, I really had no social media. I was like pretty much everyone else, you know, on Instagram, just following, you know, sports people, news stuff, you know, uh, uh, you know, just nonsense. And um, uh, I came across Andy Stickles course uh, and I took his course and it completely opened a whole new world to me about social media marketing, um, which was really at, at a perfect time because the pandemic hit uh, and I had all this time on my hands. You know, typically I would be in court every single day until, you know, at least 12, one o'clock in the afternoon. 
And then I get back to the office and just be working like crazy on paperwork, you know, appeals, you know, filings, what, whatever. Uh, so I had a lot of time to kind of get into this. And for me, being um, a, a trial attorney with no one else in my practice is a trial lawyer. So I've always had to kind of learn on the fly and by myself. Um, and I love the challenge of kind of figuring out new things. I think that's really why I'm drawn to medical malpractice work because it's so complex and it's always new. And this was like a new challenge for me. Uh, in addition to that, I have a background. I'm, I'm really tech heavy with my trial presentation. And I've always had a passion for photography and videography, which kind of came from my personal injury practice, trying to document as much about my clients uh, as I could doing day in the life videos on my own. Um, you know, always take, you know, I got into DSLR camera cameras and later mirrorless cameras. Um, and that was kind of a, a great stepping stone for me. Um, and then I think we had talked about this a little bit when, when you had first reached out to me, but I read a book by Re Russell Brunson, which is called expert secrets, which anyone that is trying to get into this you have to read this book. The, the book really changed my entire perspective on um, marketing and social media and your presence, really establishing yourself as an expert, because really all lawyers are experts. You know, it obviously varies on how long you've been practicing and what your expertise is. Um, but people are always going to look for you, look to you for answers and for knowledge. And the more you do things, you find out that you're, you know, better at certain things than, than, than other people, and you can really help them. I think that's what this is really all about is trying to help people. Yes, of course, you know, marketing, is um, you know about bringing in cases and money is great. Um, that's all well and good. Um, but I think for the vast majority of people, people value. Um, and I think that's kind of the, um, you know, the epiphany that you have uh, once you go from a content uh, consumer, oh, a content consumer to a content creator. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the big things in, if there's anything in the Expert Secrets book that really stood out to me, it was that line, um, going from a consumer to a creator, media that you have. And it can really be any platform to start that you're really comfortable with. For me, it was, it was Instagram. Uh, now I'm really into YouTube as well. Uh, I never really was that into Facebook. Um, we do do you know, a fair amount of Facebook advertising, uh, but we've kind of scaled it back in recent, um, in the, I'd say in the past year, because of the price of it. Um, and I, I, I think I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, that I think YouTube is a great alternative for people as well. Uh, once you do that and you go from consuming content to creating, uh, you kind of look at the space completely different. And really the first thing that I did was get rid of all the accounts that I was following that was just a distraction, really. That was just, you know, clickbait scrolling mindlessly that really wasn't adding value. Uh, and one of the things that Russell Brunson talks about is his Dream 100 which are all the people that are in your space that you emulate, that you want to work with or want to be like. And, you know, for the first time in my life, um, you know, I had always relied on the New York Bar, the New York State Trial Lawyers Association, which are fantastic uh, for information. But for the first time in my life, I was open to a whole new world of attorneys really all across the country um, that are doing this stuff and give incredible value um, that you can really learn a ton about. People that I've looked up to for so long, I mean, attorneys like Nicholas Rowley, uh, Chris, uh, um, Chris Stewart, uh, Ali Awad, I've, I've followed him for a long time, um, and a lot of other creators really all across the country who are not only fantastic, phenomenal lawyers, trial attorneys, uh, business owners, but also, you know, have their own style um, about creating content that's really amazing. Um, and one of the things I think that, you know, for someone who's maybe on the fence about getting into this, and one of the things, the misconceptions I think I had about, you know, marketing and social media was that it was going to be a negative thing, that there were going to be a lot of haters out there you know, you hear about trolls and, you know, people that are nasty. Um, and I know that that still happens, but for the most part on, on, in my social media journey, it's been incredibly positive, um, especially with other 
people that are in the space that you'll find that other people like me, um, the big people like Al, Al, Ali Awa, CEO lawyer, um, you know, um, top dog law, um, my friends out in California, people that I know down in Atlanta, um, you know, they're incredibly supportive. Um, and it's like, it's, it's an amazing kind of community that you kind of form. And it also leads to a lot of business, you know, possibilities because you're opening the door. Can't tell you how many referrals I've gotten from this. Um, and just opening the door as a trusted, you know, resource for people who may not know a lawyer in New York, um, right. you know, that yeah, I mean, just reach out to me to get info. Right. You know, which right. is an awesome thing, because I, I love talking to people and, and making new friends and, and learning from people. So, but, yeah, that's you know, a good point. That's, so that, that's been a great maybe an, an unexpected benefit, right, is that you're actually totally. building this, this strong, this strong network. So before we move on, Kyle, how, how is your wife now? I have to ask. Oh, she's great. Uh, th okay. Thanks, Kara. Um, uh, she's doing she's doing great. Obviously, it was like she finished chemo. She had a almost nine months of chemo, uh, which was crazy. Having a two year old, we were gut renovating an apartment at the same time. So getting through all that with work was crazy. But she's doing awesome now. Good. So, Good. Great. Yeah. Great. So, so Kyle, you know, so many of the, the lawyers that I speak to, they're, they're just not sure kind of how to start with videos specifically. Maybe they're uncomfortable in front of the camera. Maybe they don't know quite what to say. Maybe they don't think they have time to shoot and edit videos, right? So what were some of the early lessons that you learned when kind of first starting to create these videos? What advice would you give to those who are just starting out? Uh, I, I would say to fail as much as humanly possible to try and fail. Okay. If I, I, I look back at some of the old stuff that, that I was doing uh, and it's, uh, you, you got to laugh. I mean, at one point I had like this green screen set up that at the, in the beginning of the pandemic, we had moved back to my parents' house out in Long Island to get out of the city. And I had like this whole thing and it was just ridiculous. Um, but you have to do that, that stuff. You, no one's going to go into this and know what they're doing. You, you know, you kind of have to, it takes time to, to learn it. You know, it's, there's no simple fix to just dive in and be perfect. And I think that's the beauty of it, that none of us are perfect. You, you know, it's, it's not going to be executed perfectly. And some of the stuff that, you know, that you might think that you look ridiculous or comes off, you know, poorly is really just authentic because not everyone's perfect. People understand mistakes. People can laugh about things and it just kind of humanizes you. Yeah, I, think. I, agree. I agree. Um, and it's all part of your journey to get, to get, it's like, it's like anything in law, you know, uh, especially trial practice. I mean, it takes, a, it takes time. It takes hard work. You know, the, the amount of work that I've put into this and I'm sure any creator that you talk to is absolutely tremendous, but like anything, it's going to get a lot easier the more that you do it, the more kind of systems that you have in place and, you know, you figure out what works for you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll talk about a little bit more about your journey to kind of get there specifically, but uh, let's talk a little bit about leads. So how did, how long did it take before you started generating any kind of leads through your, your social videos? Do you, do you know, uh, you know, kind of about the, the, the time period that, 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 what that looked like? I, I, I honestly, I, I would say it probably started within the few, uh, the first few months of doing it. Um, I, I don't think that you're necessarily, once you start going to have an issue, um, you know, getting leads, you're definitely going to get a lot of like anything in this. You're going to get a lot of people calling or, or reaching out to you, um, you know, that aren't real cases or just have, you know, kind of questions about things that are outside your practice. Um, but after I took um, Andy's course, I really, we really tried to put in place, uh, you know, um, a strategy using click funnels, uh, set up active campaign, uh, set up Facebook groups. Um, we did that for a while and it worked well. Um, some of the biggest cases that we've gotten and some of the biggest uh, verdicts and settlements that we've gotten in the past. I'd say three, since that the three years going on, um, you know, have been leads from social media. So, wow. you know, all it takes in, in personal injury is just one big case to really justify this. Right. Um, and I know early on, it was kind of like, um, you know, it lit a fire under us because we did get a, a really big case from this. 
And we were like, yeah, this is worth it. Even though, you know, there might be times where you're not getting, you know, hits or, or people reaching out as much. Um, but it's kind of like a wave and you just got to keep pushing and, and you'll get there. I mean, no question. Yeah, that's great. So, so Kyle, do you know about what percentage of your clients now are coming from your social marketing? If you had to estimate, uh, for us, you know, I, I'm pretty lucky that we, we already had a really nice client base, um, to begin with and are for the most part, our clients are, are word of mouth um, because we have been in the area for so long. And my dad has a great reputation and a great connection with the local community here in the Bronx. But I'd say right now, probably around 25% of cases. Nice. Um, uh, like I had mentioned before. So last year, um, uh, in the middle of the year, I had gotten into um, YouTube, which I'm, I'm trying to do more and more now, um, which I love because YouTube is just, it's just a different beast from Facebook and, and Instagram um, because it is a search engine right. um, and people are, are out there searching for information and that will bring them to you. Whereas opposed to the marketing involved with more Instagram and Facebook stuff, you're putting out ads to kind of net people in, in a, you know, in a big net. Um, so last year alone, uh, we had put out one video for a mass tort, uh, a new mass tort that had come out regarding a um, ultrasound gel that had been recalled that was contaminated with bacteria and caused all these horrific, um, you know, infections and amputations, really horrible stuff. And we got about 45 cases from that just last year alone. Wow. Um, so, and, the, and they were pretty serious cases. Um, so, you know, that was really big. And, and that was, we're, we're well, constantly, yeah. So Kyle, yeah. to be clear, that was from a YouTube video or did you? That was advertise? from a YouTube video. Oh. Now, granted, this might not be um, the norm. Uh, we, I, 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 so a, a new case had come in uh, to our office who initially thought it was a medical malpractice case had been prescribed this product, uh, which was a, a bone stimulator, um, which was promoted to heal after a non-union fracture. Um, so what ended up happening, people would put it over surgical sites where they had like open reduction surgery, and it was infected with uh, bacteria that, that it was contaminated. So uh, a client came in and it wasn't a medical malpractice case. It wasn't a failure to diagnose, you know, infection and treat it. Um, but we had looked up that he was using this gel and we had found that it was, it was recalled. Mm. Um, and we kind of got ahead of the, of the, um, the group of, of people who had kind of, you know, uh, realized that this was going right. on and had started to get clients. So we spent literally nothing on, on, on advertising. We put out one great video on YouTube, which caught traction. And wow. what happens with YouTube is, you know, you, you get suggested to people once they're searching for certain terms. And um, when you search for, for this particular product, we were the first one that came up on Google. Wow. Um, so it drove a ton of traffic. Um, and it got a, you know, a, a lot of cases. So it, it was an awesome. That, that's really why I, I, I love YouTube. Plus the videos are there forever, you know? Yeah. 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 And you're certainly going to get rewarded. You know, Google uh, owns YouTube. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, that's smart. Uh, that, yeah. That's really smart. So Kyle, you touched on this briefly earlier, but do you find that leads you're generating through social media, through YouTube are of higher quality of lower quality than the leads, maybe from other sources, like PPC, or I don't know if you're purchasing leads or maybe just website inquiries, for instance, kind of what's the, what's the quality like? Uh, I would say on, uh, I would say probably the quality on YouTube um, for the most part that we get is a little bit higher because like I said, people are searching for a specific thing. They might be searching for information about an accident case, about a car accident, a slip and fall, you know, how to sue my landlord, things like that. So they're already, um, you know, they already have an issue that they want an answer for. Um, you know, none of the stuff that we really put out on YouTube is really like a, a traditional attorney ad. You know, that's really not what I think, you know, the, the, the net, this modern view of marketing is, is really just to put out useful information and establish yourself as an expert. And that's going to be more than enough for people to come and want to seek your services. You don't have to, 
you know, the days are over of, you know, I'm the best attorney. I've won a hundred million dollars. Come to my law firm. I, I think that's really uh, done. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that have a lot of success with that, you know, depending on how much money they spend. But for all, what right. works for us as a smaller law firm, where we try to keep our costs as lean as possible um, and, um, you know, kind of figure out what's the best way to, you know, at, in the beginning, at least to get organic reach. Um, and then you can always, you know, advertise certain things that are, are working for you based on what's getting the most engagement, you know, what type of questions the audience is asking. You know, that's why it's really cool with social media is because it's, it's a social thing. You know, that's what you have to think of it as. If you think of it as, as something else, I don't think it really works quite as well. But if you keep it as a social interaction and humanize yourself and what you do as a real person, a real expert in, in your field, I think it'll go a lot further. I think you make an excellent point Hello. about, you know, being authentic, being genuine and providing value and entertainment, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really kind of what, what it's all about. And, um, you know, I feel like sometimes law firms are quick to jump to advertising. Okay. How can I, how can I advertise on Facebook? Everyone's talking about generating leads on, on Facebook. I'm going to, I'm going to advertise my free consultation on, on Facebook to a wide net, but you know, the beauty of Facebook or, or all social media platforms, right, is that you can actually test your content, see what resonates before you put any money behind it, right? Totally. And I know totally. that that's kind of your, your approach too. It's, you know, let's, let's see, you know, what, what sticks and then, you know, double down on that if and when it makes sense. But um, it's so much about that, you know, information and, and that value. And, uh, you know, I actually love how you really mix educational, informative content with entertaining, lighthearted stuff, both about kind of how you handle your cases, but also about kind of life in general. So do you have any guidelines for yourself or, or general targets that you follow in creating that mix of content? Or is that something that just kind of comes organically for you? Uh, so um, the, the big thing from when you start creating and when you, you become a creator in this space you get inspiration for through everything that you do. I mean, I could be listening to the radio and get an idea about, you know, a video that might tie into some, something with personal injury or trial practice. Um, I could be last night, I was home with my wife and I got an idea for a video that I shot today that I'll probably put out tomorrow. Um, you know, you just get ideas what was from, it? from Can all we get a sneak over the place. Peek? What, what, was the, what was the idea? What was the video? Uh, <laughs> uh, it involves a Miley Cyrus song. Oh, that's a good tease. That's a good tease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay uh, we'll look out for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like we were watching pitch perfect and nice, like, nice. you know, uh, uh, that song came on and I was like, you know what, that could work for something that that one's probably funny. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you kind of draw inspiration and also from like the work that you, you, whatever you're working on, like, I did, I did a post yesterday. It was, it was kind of hating on defense attorneys um, about you, how you can't ever trust them. And that was based on an experience I had two days ago where it was just another example of that. And I've had that happen to me many times over my career where someone said, you're wrong. Absolutely. You know, your case is, 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 you know, is crap. And it ended up that the guy was completely full of it. So that was just like a, a lesson that, kind of popped out and and I thought you know what that that's a great lesson for for you know another attorney or young young lawyer coming up um to know you that's know good. yeah so it's almost like you know just start paying attention start you know kind of identifying those you know interesting trends or interesting nuggets that are kind of coming up in you know your daily life of course and in, in the way that you're handling your cases um you're a funny and guy Kara, oh, Kara, and, and just ahead, one thing yeah. that I would add yeah. Yeah. is that, you know, when you're, it can be overwhelming, you know, when you're first starting out as far as, excuse me, what, what kind of content am I going to put out? Do I have to batch film content? And, you know, I see all these other people that have such great content. Where are they getting that from? What you have to realize is that there is an endless amount of content and inspiration right in front of you on all of these platforms. You know, one thing that I do, and I, I, I try to actively 
when I'm home, you know, with, with my family, I try to put the phone away completely, but every night, you know, before bed, I'll, I'll scroll through, for instance, on Instagram, I'll go through the reels feed and just find inspiration there. I find it every night and I just save it to my, you know, save, you know, reels. And then I'll look up at it, you know, look it up later and have a whole batch of endless content. You, you know, um, it, it, there's, um, there's a term that, you know, Russell Brunson uses, it's called, it's called funnel hacking. And it's not that you're copying someone. You, you should never try to copy anyone or, or, you know, rip them off, but you're, you're taking things from different people and kind of, you know, using it. That's what everyone does. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what all social media is. People getting inspiration from other people, seeing what works, especially in marketing um, and kind of, you know, giving it your own twist. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that actually brings me to another question. Cause I am curious just how much time do you personally invest maybe each week in creating your, your social videos and your posts? Do you ever kind of batch or cluster, you know, shoot your videos? How do you, what does the process kind of look like for you? Uh, so, um, I I'd say I, there are times that if, if I'm going to have, um, you know, a long engagement, like a trial, or I know that I have, maybe I'm going to be away or I have something big that's going to take up a lot of my time. I will try to get a bunch, you know, done so that I have stuff to post. And there's certainly times where you can get like, you know, writer's block with this and you could, you know, um, you know, you know, kind of feel like I ran out of ideas or, um, you know, feel like down on yourself from this because it can be a lot, you know, um, but for me, what works is I usually do a few hours in the afternoon where I'll typically uh, write a script and try to film it for, for YouTube uh, or something might that I, I probably have been working on for maybe a few days or maybe I had the idea and I wanted to finish it up. But like with any of this, you just get better with it as time goes on. Um, I did, I, you know, the, the beautiful thing right now is that there's so much information out there that you can learn any of this. You could learn about videography on YouTube. You can figure out how I, I just built, not just probably six months ago, but I built an entire video setup in my office that's on a standing desk. I have multiple lights, multiple cameras, audio. It's all, you know, looks professional. And I did that so that I didn't need anyone. I could just flip on my, you know, camera and be ready to go. So that's kind of what works for me. Um, I, I think it's going to definitely be different for everyone. I know that there's a lot of creators that do a lot of batch creation, but that's not kind of how my mind works. Yeah. You know, I kind of get in inspiration from things that I do daily and then I'll kind of do videos, you know, as they come. So you're kind of tackling this yourself. You don't really have anyone in the office helping you out or anything. So for the most part, uh, unless a video, you know, needs, kind of a, a second person. I do everything on my own as far as video, uh, video, my, you know, um, set up all my recording stuff is all me. Um, and of, of, of course I have, um, uh, an assistant in India who does all of my video editing, all my graphic stuff, that stuff I would never suggest for anyone to do on their own, unless you have a previous experience doing that because it's so time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, all of us, especially attorneys, you want, you, you need to balance your time. You know, time is the most important thing there is. Um, and that's constantly something that I'm trying, trying to juggle. So if you can delegate as much as you can, that works for you, um, absolutely. And these days, I mean, I'm sure I know that you guys have discussed this on your podcast, but um, the ability to get the most talented, brilliant people that work overseas in the Philippines, I've had, you know, virtual assistants and um, graphic designers and editors in India and uh, Pakistan. I mean, and, you know, they're very, very cheap as far as, you know, the, the cost and they're loyal. They you know, they, they're incredible people and they love to work. Um, and so that has been a huge resource. That's something that I've learned along the way too, is to kind of harness that, that power of getting people, uh, overseas where you could keep your costs super low and the content can the quality can be really high. 
Yeah. So Kyle, how are you recruiting uh, that overseas help? Are you using are you using a platform to do that, or how are you how are you finding those? Sure. So uh, so there's a few. Um, the one. Uh, you know, if you're just getting started out with this, you know, there's uh, Fiverr, which is amazing. Fiverr is more um, freelance stuff. So if you need a, a few quick things that are done, maybe a video here or there, you want some branding stuff, logos, you know, that type of thing. Fiverr is incredible. I mean, um, it's endless what you could do, the possibilities and the type of stuff you can get. It's amazing. Um, for me, uh, as I've been doing this for, you know, now three years, um, I find Upwork is great um, because I really, <clears throat> I want to be working with someone for a long, an extended time, not like different people right. um, so that you can keep kind of your brand consistent, all of your colors and the look of your, you know, if, you, if you're using a lot of different people, um, it can get, get a little disjointed. Um, so that's why I, I really love Upwork. You can find incredible, my, my uh, assistant now, Sohail in India, that's where I got him um, and I found him. And, and we've been working now over a year together and it's, it's been great. That's a great tip. I love that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Kyle, you're, you're a funny guy and that certainly shows in your social videos. Most people may not have that gift. How would you recommend they deliver kind of entertainment value when they're looking to looking to get started here? Uh, I, look, I mean, like you said, not everyone's going to be, you know, um, a hilarious character. And to be honest, before doing this, I, you know, I'm a funny guy. I'm very personable. Um, that's always kind of been my gift in, in practicing law is that I can always connect with people. That's why I think I've been a a, you know, pretty good trial attorney. Um, but I think that the, the main thing is to stay authentic. You know, whatever really your personality is, there are going to be people that, that are into it. There's definitely, there's going to be people out there. And, you know, in this crazy world, I think, you know, kind of the weirder you are, the maybe the off, you know, you know, outside or, you know, outside the norm that you are, I think can be better for you almost. Yeah, you know, people are drawn to that. Yeah, right, right. I think sometimes it's hard. That's a tough hurdle for some lawyers to get over, right? Is that these videos don't need to be perfectly polished with high production value. And, you know, per, you know, they don't need to be perfect. In fact, you know, when there are some ums and ahs or some, you know, just some natural speech, it really does bring that kind of genuine authenticity. So I, I totally agree. It brings I, I think, Kara, right? you know, for anyone out there, um, you know, there's, there's definitely like the instinct to act like a lawyer. Yeah. You know, I look yeah, like right. a lawyer right now. I'm in a suit and tie. You know, I had two mediations today and I had clients here. That's, that's really why these days I really wouldn't be in a full, full suit every day. Um, but there's like this instinct to act like, like a lawyer and not so much like yourself. Um, and I think if you put a lot of work into what you're putting out there, and as long as it's valuable information that you're giving to people for free, you know, I, I think they're going to be drawn to that. If it's just wishy-washy and, and people can tell if you're kind of half-assing it. Um, so if, if you put the time in, I, I think it, that really goes, people can tell, you know, when you put a lot of work into something that, that they're going to appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. Kyle, before we wrap up, we undoubtedly have attorneys listening to this session who are inspired by what you have done, why what other lawyers have accomplished on social media. So what's your kind of top bit of advice to those folks who really want to do what, what you're doing? What's What advice do you have for them? Okay. So if you're new to this, I would, I would say, first of all, pick one platform that you use the most you know if you're into facebook instagram youtube whatever it is pick the platform that you use the most because you're going to be that much more familiar with the you know how it works okay and then my best piece of advice is to get rid of his go on your account and delete as many of the nonsense you know distraction accounts that you have on there as possible outside. For, I mean, I got rid when I first started this, I got rid of like everyone that wasn't in my like immediate family. And I had to start like refriending my, my close friends. And they're like, what is this? I'm like, I just needed to like, kind of take a pause and get rid of all this. Yeah. And then you can kind of get a little clarity and try to focus and look to see what other people in your space are doing. 
And then just throw the, you know, these days also you got the, you got your phone. That's all you need right now. You don't have to go crazy getting a, a camera set up and, and all that. Just use your phone and start, start getting, start, you know, firing away and you'll get comfortable eventually. Just start. I love it. Just, just start. start. Yeah. So Kyle, thank you so much for your candor today and sharing your experience. You were really wonderful. Um, if you don't already be sure to follow Kyle on Instagram, he's at Kyle new ESQ. You'll yep. not be disappointed. You'll learn a lot. So thanks everyone. Be sure to join us for our next episode of practical marketing tips for small law firms happening very soon. Have a great day. Take care. Great. Bye -bye. Thanks, Kara. Thanks.